Welcome to the Publish Her Podcast, a place where you can come to get inspiration, motivation, help, encouragement, and support in your journey to write, publish, and sell your book. Hosted by Alexa Bigwarf. Cause I've been where you've been And I've felt what you're feeling And I don't want to get in your way Well, welcome back to another episode of the Publish Her Podcast. This is a different podcast episode than many of the ones I have recorded in the past, primarily because our guest, Mel Tordefranco, is only 21 years old. And in the last four years since she turned 17, she not only moved to the mountains of Thailand, uh, but she has published four of her own books, is getting ready to publish a fifth book, has started a publishing company, and has run several writing competitions. Oh, by the way, she's also become successful at making money from YouTube with all of her stuff, and co-wrote a screenplay for her first novel to be made into a short YouTube movie. So, she's 21. I thought this was so fascinating, just asking her all of the questions about what she's been doing, how she got there, and what I love the most about it is truly just the entrepreneurial nature of of her and probably many kids in that, kids, she's a young woman, excuse me, probably many people in that age range and the, all the opportunities that are out there to throw away traditional, go to college and do your own thing. She did not go to college, by the way. We'll get into all of this. But it's it's just so fun how the publishing industry is evolving, how digital, digital entrepreneurship is evolving, and how many opportunities there are out there if we're willing to take them. Also, she has some advice for young writers. So if you are a young writer, I know we probably don't have too many people listening to the podcast in that age range, but if you have a child or grandchild or someone you know who's interested in starting as a young writer, I think this is a great podcast to share with them and for them to follow Mel and see all the things that she's doing. So I hope you enjoy the show as much as I enjoyed creating or having this interview with Mel. Welcome everybody to another episode of the Publish Her podcast. I'm Alexa Bigworth, your host, and I'm really pleased to bring you Mel Tornafranca today. She is an award-winning author from the San Francisco Bay Area, now residing between the jungly mountains of Northern Thailand, which we'll have to talk about because that's super interesting. (laughs) She is known for writing stories with dark vibes, also interesting, morally ambiguous characters, this is getting more fun by the moment, and bold endings. In addition to her own projects, Mel shares the work of others at her indie publishing house, Lost Island Press. She also drinks way too many lattes. Well, there are worse things that you could drink too many of, (laughs) Mel. (laughs) Thank you for being with us on the show today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, you have a plethora of things we could dig into in your in your background bio and all of the things. So it's going to be hard to choose where I go. But first, I'm such a, first of all, I love traveling. I love living abroad, going abroad, all those kinds of things. So my interest lies in how in the heck did you wind up in the mountains of Thailand? <laughs> yeah, it was a series of decisions that first started with my choice not to go to college mm. and um after I made that decision I started to think about well I could just continue doing the online stuff where I am or I could travel somewhere and it was COVID at the time so there were quite a few restrictions on where I could travel and Thailand happened to be one of the places that was fairly open and I had a a friend from high school who was interested in coming along so out of uh a lot of impulse and just curiosity we ended up coming here and Um, I really lucked out because the city that we ended up in is like my favorite place I've ever been to. And I've been here um, over two years now. Wow. Do they just allow you to like, as long as you can support yourself and pay for your way, you can stay or what's it like? I'm, I'm, I want to move away Mm -hmm. to another country one day. So I'm always curious, like the legal aspects, how, how are you allowed to stay or do you just leave every 90 days and come back or. (laughs) Uh, That that is one option, but it's kind of a pain. Uh Um, I actually have, I'm on my second year of an education visa. So I I do Uh um, this self-defense course and it's not a big commitment. You teach it or you're, or you're. Uh, No, no, I'm, I'm just a student there. Oh no, that's fun. 
Okay, we could. Okay, I'm going to stop that part of the conversation because I could probably spend an hour <laughs> just talking about why and how and all the logistics. But that's a very creative um, way to work it. I love it. So, your writing. When did you? You didn't go to college, which is great because clearly you're still making a living doing very entrepreneurial things, which I love and appreciate. When did you start writing and how many books do you have mm -hmm. published at this? Mm -hmm. I started writing when I was around seven years old. Wow. And then I published my first book um, when I was 17 in high school, which was called Leaving Wishville. And as of now, I have published four books. That's great. And I, you you made a comment in your um, application or information for this podcast that YouTube accidentally played a role in attracting readers to your book. So constantly telling people that they need to be using video and using other opportunities or even finding mm -hmm. influencers on those places. So I'm really curious what happened with um, with the YouTube. Yeah, for sure. I really just stumbled upon it. Um, writing for me has always been a very important hobby in my life but I grew up with the assumption that I wouldn't be able to make any money doing it mm -hmm. and so I had a lot of um, I threw myself into my schoolwork and I had a lot of ideas about where my career was going to go in the future architecture was one of them at one point in time um, and it just so happened that writing uh, thanks to YouTube kind of took off for me I also had a slight interest in video editing, although not as big as writing. Mm -hmm. And I started a YouTube channel at first documenting uh, little vlogs with family or friends. And I eventually ended up making a, cou a couple of videos that were based on my writing experiences. And those are really what made my channel start to grow unexpectedly. And by the time I was in my junior year of high school, um, I don't know how many subscribers I had at the time, but it got to the point where I was starting to make money from YouTube and really second guessing the whole college thing. So YouTube really threw my whole life in a completely new direction. And how has it worked for you bringing uh, readers just because they're stumbling across your videos and then finding out that you're an author as well? Or are you doing trailers uh, or things of that nature about your book? Yeah. You know, it's really hard to say because I've done a combination of both. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my more popular videos was definitely geared towards other writers, I would say. I made a video called, I wrote a book when I was 13, it sucked. <laughs> and that video really uh, took off. It's one of my most popular ones. And I think a lot of, that was the first time I had like an actual big spike of subscribers on my channel but I've also posted a lot of other random stuff and people happen to find out that I'm also a writer mm -hmm. so I think it's probably gone both ways that's really cool well, I'm glad to see that that working for you both as a source of income um, through the YouTube stuff but also bringing readers to your book so books um, you said you've got four are you still writing are you continuing to write or have you kind of transitioned into growing a publishing house which we'll talk about mm -hmm. um I'm definitely still writing I'm planning to publish my next book on May 11th so coming up pretty soon um I'm in the middle of writing a series right now so there I, I definitely have to keep that running along um but yes I'm also doing quite a bit of work at Lost Ellen Press as well so tell me, when did, did you create that as an imprint that just originally for your own books and then you started taking on other authors or how to, what's the history on that? Yeah, exactly. I started Lost Ellen Press uh, more as just an imprint or a name to publish through uh, when I was 17, like right as I was publishing Leaving Wishville. Um, that's actually why it's called Lost Ellen Press is because it's related to kind of the plot of the very first book I wrote kind of oh, this cool. lost island yeah um so that's why I created that and gave it that name and then um I think it was around the time that I was publishing my second book when I had the idea of also publishing work for other authors as well and um I launched a writing contest which I promoted on my YouTube channel and I had quite a few young writers who were following me at the time that submitted their work 
and um, actually our first winner, her name is uh, Shira Bohr, and she was 19 at the time, um, and her book was the first book, like someone else's book that I published. Um, it's called My Brother's Spare, and that was a really great learning experience, and I had a lot of fun. So um, how many authors do you have in your press right now, and do, is this a contest that you run annually to bring in new people? Uh, at the moment, no, although I do think that would be a good way to do it in the future. Uh, right now, I'm running the contest uh, kind of whenever I can, <laughs> when I when I have the bandwidth. I don't have uh, like a huge team running this with me. It's kind of I'm doing most of the, the work here. Uh, so I have to make sure that I'm able to have enough time where I can devote what the books deserve. So I am going to you know, open the contests when I'm available to do so. And right now I've run two contests and I've published, um, I've had three other writers join Lost Allen Press as authors. That's cool. Are you really looking to grow your publishing house or is this something that's kind of, um, I know with one of my imprints that I have, it's kind of a place for me to publish my books. And maybe if I have a friend that wants to publish in the same genre kind of thing, but I'm not actively growing it. Or is this something yeah. that's like part of your long-term strategy or are mm -hmm. you focused more on the writing and growing your, your books? Mm. It's definitely something I am putting some effort into growing. Although um, right now it's mostly just growing organically. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that it's not something that I'm devoting all of my time into or, mm -hmm. or throwing my heart and soul into like a, some startup uh, that other people might be uh, putting a lot of energy into because I do need time for my own writing projects as well. But it's not something that I see stopping anytime soon. I want to keep it running and growing for sure. Um, and that's actually, that's my largest newsletter is through Lost Island Press. It's um, it's grown much larger than my personal newsletter. That's great. I think one of the the things that I really love about talking with you is that you embody the entrepreneurial spirit that the publishing industry gives us now. I mean, there's so many different ways and avenues that you can take well, you've got the YouTube channel and just like making money through that as one element and related to your writing. You've got the sale of your own books. You've got your publishing house. Is your contest a free contest or is it something that you um, generate revenue from? Uh, that's totally free. Yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. Um, some people use writing contests as a way to generate some 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 level or at least cover the cost of things that go along with it. So right. I think it's it's really neat to see you um, see all of the different things that you've created to come about this. But that's not the only thing that you've done. You also um, are, are writing are writing screenplays. Is that co-writing a screenplay for, for your book? Oh, yes. Right? That was a um, that was a project I did. Um, I can't remember the year, but it was for my first novel, Leaving Wishville. Um, Sebastian Delgado reached out to me uh, to co-write the screenplay or a screenplay adaptation for a short film based on the, the story. Um, and I actually went down to Santa Cruz for a couple of the days of the production to film a behind the scenes video for my channel. So that was a really fun project. That is really cool. What did it actually, did they complete the project and is the movie done and, and out there? Yes, it's completed oh. and it's available on YouTube. That is so cool. That that must have been a wild experience. I think that's everybody's dream is to see their book become a movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it was really fun. And just getting to meet all the people involved um, who weren't necessarily writers, but just uh, people who were, um, you know, helping with filming and photography and just planning everything out. It was really uh, fun to be uh, part of a creative environment like that. Yeah. Well, our community is um, largely in the much older uh, age range than, than, than your age range. But I know we often get people asking us, like I have a a daughter or a granddaughter who wants to write a mm. book. I have a friend who's, whose child is interested in this. Do you have any resources or information for young writers? So being that you started not only writing so early, but publishing really young, um, which mm. I just think is phenomenal. What advice do you have for young writers that are trying to break into this world? Mm -hmm. I would say 
one of the biggest things is to not be afraid to share your work. I would say I really grew a lot more as a writer once I started to get involved in beta reading. So sending my work out to people and getting feedback. And this could mean asking friends and family or approaching people at school. That was something I did for a while. Um, or even going on on forums online and messaging people privately. Um, if you ask enough people, you'll get some yeses. And I think that's a really great way to improve your writing. And it's very scary at first, but it helps you gain a lot of confidence in your work once you actually start getting feedback and knowing what people actually do think of your work. Um, and then I'd also say just making it a habit and something that you enjoy, incorporating it, incorporating it into your routine, um, trying not to think of it as a chore and put too much pressure on yourself. Um, I still, when I feel stressed about writing and stuff, I'll go to a really nice new coffee shop or uh, try to make it fun because it is supposed to be fun at the end of the day. Yeah, thank you. I think all of us need to hear that message. And and FYI, <laughs> it's scary at every age. <laughs> I haven't figured mm -hmm. out how to get over the fear and the vulnerability that comes along with that. But that's great advice. Well, I'm just I'm I'm really excited about all the different things that you're doing, and you're you're the the next generation coming up and building the where the publishing world will go and all the opportunities for writers out there what would you, where would you like people to go? Is there something you want them to know about in particular or a place to follow you, get your books, all of those types of things? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the best place to stay in touch with me would be through uh, my newsletter. So you can sign up on maltoryfranca.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. This has been fun. You don't have to give me Thank you for joining us on the Publisher Podcast. We hope to see you back for the next episode. Great, huge thanks goes to Jasmine Commerce for the use of her song. You can find Jasmine on SoundCloud. Go check out all of her music. We'll see you next time.